In this video, we're going to be talking about independent and dependent variables, and we're also going to be talking about the function machine. So what are independent and dependent variables? Well, before we explain that, let's talk about what the words independent and dependent mean. Let's look at a parent with their child. Who here is independent and who is dependent? Well, the parent is referred to as the independent one. And that is because they can function independently from the child. Whereas the child is the dependent one. They cannot function without a parent in their life. So what do we mean when we talk about dependent and independent variables? In the function below, y equals 2x plus 1, we have two variables, x and y. The input variable is known as the independent variable, and the output variable is known as the dependent variable. So which one is which? Well, on a table of values, the input variable is always put at the top. And the output variable is always put on the bottom row. Now, when you look at this equation, you can see that x is your input variable, because usually you pick an x value and input it or substitute it in place of x. It will then output a value which is referred to as your y value. Most of the time when we have an equation in terms of x and y, they always seem to pick x as the input variable, which goes at the top of the row, and y as the output variable, which goes at the bottom of the row. It's important to note that it is possible to have x as your output variable and y as your input variable. If that was the case, it would probably be written something like this, x equals 2y plus 1. But for some reason, we always seem to pick x as the input variable. Anyway, once we label our table, we start by picking some input values or some x values. And we might write something down such as negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We can basically pick whichever number we want. We pick them independently. Hence why the input variables are referred to as the independent variables. So what about our y values, our output values? Well, they're actually very dependent. They depend on what x values have been substituted into the equation. Take, for example, this square here. What y value do I put here? Well, I actually need to refer to the x value of negative 1. I need to input this value or substitute this value into the equation. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1 will give me an output of negative 1. This output or y value here was very dependent. It was dependent upon which x value was picked. On any table of values, you will always have your inputs or your independent variables on the top row and your outputs or the dependent variables on the bottom row. When you look at the graph, the input variables are always put onto the horizontal axis. So the horizontal axis is the one that has the input variables, which are also known as the independent variables which means that the vertical axis is where we put our output variables, which are also known as the dependent variables. So quite often we have our x-axis as our horizontal axis and our y-axis as our vertical axis. Now I mentioned that I'd like to talk about something we call the function machine. And a function machine also talks about having inputs and outputs.
You'll notice when we input a value of zero, you get an output of $300. We have other inputs with their associated outputs. You'll also notice that when we input the variable n, it outputs an equation, 500n plus 300. And this equation actually shows us what the function machine is doing. We can see that each time it takes a variable, multiplies it by 500, and then adds 300. I'm going to actually test this using a calculator. Let's look at our input of 3. It should have an output of 1800. So let's take that 3, our input, multiply it by 500, times 500, and then add 300. And we get the output of 1800. Now, why is it that we're talking about this function machine? Well, we actually see these all the time in real life. And a really good example of this is Google. I'm going to bring up a function machine right now. Let, let's say I wanted to convert ounces to grams. I, I might be cooking something and everything's been given in ounces, I need to convert it to grams. The recipe might tell me that I require three ounces of sugar. So I take my function machine, I input a value of three, and it gives me an output of 85 grams. Now what Google is doing here is they have some sort of an equation or function working in the background. I take my input, they substitute that input into their special equation or function, and then give an output. That's basically what we mean when we talk about a function machine. Whenever you input a value, the function machine will put that value or substitute that value into an equation and then spit out an output value. Anyway, that concludes our video talking about independent variables, dependent variables, and the function machine. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.